Yo, 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 it's a classic movie band uh, with your homeboy, Ned Dog and B Dog. <laughs> Hi, Brenton. Hi, Nathan. Hi. How are you going? Good. Really, really good. As you can see, I've just come so prepared for this oh. week's episode <laughs> of what we've got. Um, something I want to talk about this week. Just how do you deal with busyness? Because, like, because <laughs> I've been struggling a little bit with this. So, I've been having one of those big weeks where, like, something's on every day, right? Mm-hmm. And... I don't know how to like handle it because like I've been <laughs> so I so I've had like a thing every night and by a thing I mean like a social event like drinks and all that kind of stuff and every night I've been out with friends and that kind of stuff and you know we're going out having fun like going to concerts and all that kind of stuff but I'm getting more and more exhausted and, I, and I'm at that point now where I, I, I'm afraid of saying no because I'll be antisocial but like I also like want to say yes because I know how fun it is that's not a question, is it? It's not a question. It, it's more of a... It, it's it's where you're at. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're going into the psyche of Nathan. <laughs> Let's dive on in. <laughs> Let's Rick and Morty it. Let's go inside your inside that brain and just see what's really going on. It's um, hard, though. Like, I don't oh, know. no. It, I'm, I'm totally... Well, for me, it's... Are you a timetable? Do you use a calendar app? I'm. I no. I don't use the app. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I am can, the app. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> My brain is the app. Uh, no. I. I sometimes makes kind of like lists of shit I need to do during the day. Okay. And I have like, like a, physical lists. Yeah. And I okay. have like a diary as well. And so I'll I'll like transfer the list into the diary like the night before. Okay. Sometimes. This doesn't sometimes go to plan because, again, like, life's busy. And I think I'm at my best <laughs> yeah. when I have a mixture of both. There's some planning happening of, mm. like, the big stuff that's happening, like social stuff, uh, podcast episodes. Of course. Films I need to watch. Yes. They're the big things in life. And <laughs> good, then, good, good work. And then, but sometimes that just goes out the window and you just have to improvise. And mm. that's when I feel like I'm in my... Also element. like these elements. Also like these yeah. podcast episodes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's true. Like, yeah. are you so when you write it down? Is this like in like a Slytherin notebook? Like, eventually, do you use all four houses for this, or is this like? Oh well, we'll see. We'll see how. We'll see when I finish the Gryffindor one. Because, <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm a guy that like I. I don't really. I don't really use my calendar app either. Because I don't know it's, just, it's such a it's a whole thing adding an event to a calendar. Have you used oh, a calendar yeah. app before? Not no. It's like yeah. <laughs> well, like I I have like once to be like yeah. this is the calendar. And then app. you threw your phone across the room afterwards. You're like how I, dare you? <laughs> I got a hammer and I got a nail and I just put a nail through it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my phone doesn't work. It's for some atrocious. Reason now. It's awful. Yeah. yeah, and like people got like, those icon calendars. I remember I used to be. So, I don't know what happened, but when I was like in high school, I used to be so much more organized than what I am today. Mm. And maybe it's because you just have less responsibility. Maybe in high school, so you can afford to plan well. Maybe. Or maybe <laughs> maybe Are we always disorganized. Maybe yeah, maybe it's like because your your reference point for I guess organization is just what yeah. school school maybe tells you and that is have dude, have those have that calendar out, have that diary out, have your <laughs> Write those goals for the week. Out, put your goals down. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like goal you oh. should you no, you like if if that works for you and that's how you get through the day-to-day grind of, of, of what we call life. <laughs> that's fine. All the power to you. I'm glad that works for you. But I, I don't know. Like, don't you find it like con- like demeaning a little bit? For me, it's soul-crushing. <laughs> <It's> I couldn't <laughs> do those weekly goals back in the day. Like, you know, it's like when you like... Remember primary school, you used to get like weekly effort awards and that kind of stuff? Oh, God, yes. I used to hate it. And you'd always get it for the most mundane shit. It's like you didn't like piss yourself that week. <laughs> or like, or, I don't know, or you decided to pick up one piece of litter and then suddenly get a weekly effort award. It's that classic like participation <laughs> certificate, you know? Yeah. And it's like the big deal. It's like you... You entered it. You you kind of were a part of this. You you know maybe you picked up that piece of litter. So here's a, <laughs> here's a gold but star. Do you and I must have both had friends. I remember friends at least that like I'm sure you had a friend at some point, Brendan. But like, wouldn't you have friends that like got really excited about the participation certificates? And because yes, because I don't know if this sounds wanky, but like <clears throat> like you and I when we grew up growing up, we got proper rewards <laughs> like for genuine hard tasks. And so I don't know if it sounds like pretentious, but like you get those little like weekly like congratulations you didn't like blow your head off like certificates and you just like oh well, just toss it away yeah onto but, the next thing it, yeah exactly but like, did you have mates who, who who loved getting those certificates i knew people um i wouldn't say they're probably acquaintances maybe they were in my class when i was younger 
that <laughs> if they didn't get one of those things, it would it would destroy their souls. Really? They would, yeah. They would crush like, them. Some people was, get like two or three week streak of them. Yeah. And, and they're like, I'm on a roll. And <laughs> it was like, oh no, like, Mum and dad are like gonna yell at me tonight or something because like I didn't. It looks like I'm not getting fed tonight. Yeah, like, <laughs> back in the cage. Oh, like. I, I don't know what it would. I like I understand the the kind of the logic behind young children. Here's like the star board or whatever, and like you did a good deed. That's great. Positive association. Here's a star. Here's yeah, a yeah, stick yeah, or yeah. whatever to put in your. Here's a scratch and sniff. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh, no, that, was, that, was the, that was the cocaine of childhood, wasn't it? Like, it's still the cocaine of it's the, it's, it's, it is practically cocaine. Oh, if, um, I was, if I was also a bag of cocaine or scratch and sniff stickers, I know which one I'd pick. It's it's funny. Now I think about it, that's something as an adult. Like, I wonder why I haven't done that. I wonder why you just haven't sought them out. I haven't, yeah, I haven't sought them out. I just bought a packet and just put them everywhere, so I can just like in my house, so like on the fridge, in the dishwasher, <laughs> in the like, shower. Brenton, why have you been in the shower for that long? It's like get away. <laughs> Just <laughs> Go away! <laughs> Leave me alone! Oh, yeah, like that apple flavor. You're like, oh, apples. And yeah. it's just like, Brenton, that's It's fine. like, calm down. That's fine. Three steps back. Leave him alone. <laughs> Give him his space. Just- but you've got a point there. Like that positive, that constant positive reinforcement, like it can be dangerous because then when they stop being kids, they become teenagers or adults. Like they feel like they still need that positive reinforcement all the time. And th- when you don't yeah. get it as an adult, because when you're an adult, no one gives two shits about anything you do. Like you feel bad because you don't think yeah. you're succeeding as much as when you're a kid. Yeah, I definitely know people that have struggled making that uh, that leap from childhood to adolescence to adulthood and and, and and it's it's linked to that it's linked to that there's no kind of foundation of of a reward system necessarily yeah like because at the end of the day no I'm an I'm, I'm an adult at the hey, ripe do, old age do you want a certificate of, 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 of 22 uh, on going on 23 uh, it's it doesn't work like that. Like you have your own kind of internal reward system mm. because as, as do people, you give yourself rewards like when you do a good thing like at work. Yeah, like, but I don't like plan it. I don't go. Oh, that was great. I am. I am now going to reward myself. I mm. in the mo- like. Is like just like after work you'll buy yourself some sushi or something like that. Like yeah. is that your reward? Yeah, dude. Yeah, for me it's food. Like food is a good reward for like that kind of stuff. Because mm. yeah, because I I'll do like a hard day's work for the work and I will like show you know the people at my work and they're like oh yeah good stuff mm. <laughs> like like kiss my knees. It's like. <laughs> But, yeah. but yeah, for, so for me it'll be like a, it'll be a, a snack kind of thing, or yeah. or um yeah. So but but like the whole point of this, like I just like because I can't plan my weeks out that well because it's so mm. immediate. That I feel like there's all these tasks like short term. I've had to like fall back on just like focusing on the next thing and just feeling good about that. Mm. Like I, I for example, I had a really really big week this week where I was just doing something every night and like. I remember halfway through it, I was just, I, I didn't even know what I was doing that night. I just looked at my notes app where I had everything written down the room. I'm like, okay, there's, it felt like, it felt like all these fun things coming up was like a job. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's, you have to, it's, it's, I know exactly what you mean. It's like, like yeah. working your brain around your week and being like, there's slots in here, there's slots in there and, 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 and juggling. Yeah. And, and, um, and in, it's, it's funny that there, there are events or, you know, or gatherings that, you know, you will get there and relax at and enjoy yourself and have a nice time. Yeah. But it's about being like... But on that Uber on the way back home, you'd be looking back at your phone drunk and you'd be like, oh God, it's like, yeah. I have to go to a concert because tomorrow now. It's like <laughs> I think it's because um, I've been away for the past week. You uh, have? In a small... How was Mordor? Oh, it was wonderful. The Yorks gave me a great welcome. Oh, was, did yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. good on them. They gave me my own ring. It was great. They gave you a ring? Yeah, Holy shit. Yeah. Nice. It wasn't a good one. I think it was like lead or something. Oh, rip. You still got it or are you like... Oh, I threw it away. Oh, you so bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, that's why I can't yeah. see you. You've got it on now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, no, in, in Mordor, I think in Sydney, you really have to plan these things because mm. it's a big city. It's hard to get around. Oh, it's I've got a story for you. So, oh, go for it, dude. Take it so away. So, on Wednesday, my sister came down to um, Sydney to go to a Kendrick Lamar concert with me, right? Hey. Hey. Yeah, How I, was that? I'm pretty cool, you know. Good to see Kendrick. It was amazing. Like, he, it was great. He recently won a Pulitzer Prize for his, for his, you know, his, his album, Damn. And so, I, on like one of his opening songs, he had he was just doing a rap and there was like a samurai dancer on stage. And in the background, it said Pulitzer Kenny. <laughs> 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 and, oh, it was just great. Ah, it was so great. He's, he's uh, just quickly, and Kendrick Lamar I, th- yeah. I appreciate him so much in the sense that I've never seen him live personally but I've seen clips of his like live shows and stuff oh yeah and the way he makes- yeah, just from Snapchat or something. Yeah. but the way he makes those shows into like an experience I think yeah. I think has to be 
commended, you know. Has oh, to yeah. be, he has to, hey, he has to get a gold sticker for that. Oh, like, he, yeah. but he'll be getting fun. lots of week left rewards for that, like every bloody week of his trip. Yeah. But it was his closing show. Anyway, so my sister comes down and she, um, I said, okay, meet me at my work. I gave her the work address um, in the CBD and I said, meet me at my work and we'll go from there to um, the the concert. She's like, great. She said, I'll, I'll be here a little bit early so I'll go to your home first. So I'm like, great, here's my home address. She goes there. And then I said to her, hey, make sure you like you leave home like maybe for an hour just in case you do get lost like because there's a new city for you. Like, you know, see if you can find me. She's like, great. So I get a message from her like maybe half an hour before she's due to rock up. She's like, oh, hey, Nath, on the bus now. And I'm like, I thought I told you to leave early. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, I I got lost. And I'm like, I, but I gave you the address. And I'm like, you, I'm like, don't you just put it into Google Maps and, and it tells you where to go? And Jess is like what do you mean put into Google Maps? And I'm like, what do you mean, what do you mean would put it into Google Maps? And she's like, look, I'm, I just went up to the bus stop. I asked the bus driver, does this head towards like the street my brother's at? And the bus driver's like, no. And so she waited the bus up, the next bus came. She just walks up to the nearest bus stop, by the way. And she just said to the next bus, oh, does this go to this street? And he's like, nope. And then another bus came and eventually someone said yes. And so she just hopped on that bus and just went on off. And I'm like, if you're going to be here on a certain time, you plan this out. And she's like, oh, how do I do that? And I'm like, Jess, <laughs> what are you doing? Mm-hmm. So eventually she um, she's going in the complete opposite direction, by the way. She was oh, on the wrong no. side of the road. So the bus had to go all the way around the suburb before heading back out. And so uh, we ended up meeting her at Central. And, oh. she, and she was also supposed to buy me dinner before um, I met her so we could like eat it on the train. And she didn't. So I was like starving. And I met her on the train and I'm like, you f- you idiot. <laughs> like, ah. You know what? A calendar app would have definitely helped her in that situation. No, Google Maps would have Google done Maps. Would have who, done who the, the job. fuck doesn't know about Google Maps? I like, hey, people in Mordor, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Those like, orcs. Like. It's, it's easy to get around. You get on your little trebuchet and you get you, you drive around and, you know, it's easy to get <laughs> around. imagine? They yeah. remake Lord of the Rings like, like today and Frodo's just got his iPhone out. <laughs> He's just got the path, like, the path. But this past uh. week, I've just been able to be like, hey, dude, where you at? Like, you know, if I'm catching up with someone and it's like a 15 minute drive on the trebuchet across across <laughs> town and I'm there across town in Sydney a hey, it does not take 15 minutes to get across no. I, I use public transport most of the time in Sydney mm. because you know tolls are tolls are a bitch they are a bitch um, and as you know I only just got a vehicle here in Sydney Ooh. so that's exciting yeah um, but still I probably won't use it that much no y- you know like I do I, f- I hear you I feel you but I remember when I first moved to Sydney and it was it was that adjustment of yeah I need to I need to leave an hour before to and plan that hour and know which bus I'm getting on which train I'm getting on where where the stops go how long it's going to change between lines between buses whatever it is because it Look takes you, you're time. adulting Brenton I'm, I'm happy for you oh, buddy man. It's, I'm, I can say, I mean uh, the, the, the grey hair is the most obvious thing about you being an it's adult it's been but. a hell of a journey it's been a hell of a ride <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey. It sounds like a man on his deathbed. <laughs> it's classic movie banter. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome hey. to episode. What episode one, are we up to? One, oh, 11. Like, there you go. Classic movie banter. Here we are. Oh, who just end the episode now? Like, <laughs> just, it's like what, what are we doing? It's like, it's yeah. episode 11, isn't it? <laughs> We're just both exhausted. <laughs> hey, I was. Well, I got a, once we get into the episode and we start talking about the film and whatnot, I got some stories about about just like the experience of watching this because Ooh, it goes okay. into that, goes into that. Oh man, like I just kind of want this episode to be over. Like I don't, you know. Yeah, it, you and I are just like oh, just get us out of here. Like, <laughs> wait, but Brandon, stop sprinting, quick, back, <laughs> get back in the studio, back in the studio, back in there. <laughs> We're recording, bitch. Get in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, how are yeah. you going? Oh, oh, I know how you're going. Like, <laughs> I'm going. I'm actually going real good this week. Yeah. Dude. Actually, I'm going pretty good as well. Yeah. Like, it was it was a, it was a busy week. So I'll tell you my week, even though you, who cares? But I'll tell you anyway. So Monday, I went out to this Japanese bar called Goro's with some work with some workmates. Lovely, and it was amazing. It was so good. One of my favorite things there. And we played pool, and I won, and I never win pool, but I won that game of pool, Brenton. Tuesday, I went to a Wombats concert, which was fantastic. Wednesday was a Kendrick concert. Wow. Thursday, um. Saw a, saw a lady saw a lady friend and we had a nice night together with the lady friend and then Friday I what did I do Friday 
Oh yeah, I went out um with some other workmates and um we had a whiskey night and went back to a hostel to watch the moon thingamajiggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the blood moon. Blood yeah. moon. Yeah. This sounds like every like teen romance novel. So <laughs> that was in the morning, dude. I thought it was gonna be Saturday night and it was Saturday morning at like no. four AM. Yeah. I was just like, so like I wanna go home. Like <laughs> uh, yeah. And then yeah, last night was just like detox so hey, that's great yeah. and now we're here and now we're here yeah my week uh, as I said I was in Mordor I had a lot of Jap- speaking of Japanese food I had yeah. all so much Japanese food in Ooh. Mordor oh it was great yeah, I had yeah. some Wagyu beef you know nice what's your favourite Jap restaurants on the coast uh do you go to Tokyo uh, Kitchen? Do you know Tokyo Kitchen? I do know Tokyo Kitchen. It's not it's bad. It's so good. It's pretty good. Do you know yeah. a place called Hachi and Nobis? Yes, I do. Oh, that's Dude, so good. I know, I know so many Japanese places on the coast. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, there's a lot of good ones. Oh, there's this one in um on the highway, the Gold Coast oh, Highway. Yeah? Uh, God, is it Itoshin, I think it's called? I don't think I know it. What suburb? Uh, so Broadbeach Waters, it would be. Oh, crocky. I should know that then. I used yeah. to live there. It's it's next to like where the Sizzler is and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, Artition. yeah. And it's this like... Oh, interesting. Dude, it's real nice. I've I never been to that one. I, I haven't been there in years, but man, it's oh. it's got some prime Japanese I know one stuff. really near that where the Night Owl is. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have a place there called Jungle Sushi, which is quite good. Yes, I know that one. Yeah, hey, yeah it's quite good. There you go. Yeah. I know. You, you, you learn quick with the Jap restaurants exactly, in, in Gold yeah. Coast. Yeah. Yeah, I ate so much Japanese cuisine. Oh, oh man. It's so good. Because also you can't afford Jap here. I, I don't we had that much Jap here so oh, like, it's mainly ramen that you can get here it's yeah. like you know it's like that cheap like you know like, yeah, yeah 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 which is great but like the real the real stuff is, I think oh. we mentioned sushi like every third episode Brenton like <laughs> because it's worth mentioning it is worth mentioning yeah it's quite good unfortunately there's no Japanese cuisine in this film no there's other cuisines and you know there are other cuisines but, yeah there's there's Korean people but not Japanese cuisine unfortunately no, so no. no so yeah this week we watched um, so it's funny for, so for weeks I've been saying to Brendan like I've been wanting to watch this film for a while mm. and Brendan's like oh what's this film do the right thing I'm like oh it's like the black film it's like that's, that's all I knew about it I'm like this is the quintessential black film and Brendan's like oh yeah sounds good I didn't realise before what a great summation that was <laughs> of what this film is and but um do you want to ask the question? I will ask you the question. I was waiting for the opening. Oh, okay. And here it is. <laughs> Nathan, pitch me this film. Okay, done. So, uh, welcome to my studio. As you can see, I've got all these great posters of films we've watched before. Oh, yeah. I've, I reviewed such greats oh. as West Side Story and oh. Emerald City oh. and Animal House. Can we just tear those ones down? Can we get rid of those? Uh, <laughs> well, tell you what. If you, you want to watch a film... If, well, boy, I've got a film for you. Oh, do you? I do. Oh, ah. what is it? What, so, what, what's it about? Okay, this is okay. Watch a f- so do the right thing is a film set in Brooklyn in New York City, mm. nineteen eighty nine, probably, and and you follow um the uh black community living in this suburb, um centered around this one pizza shop run by John Turturro's father? Question mark. And and you watch the racial t- tensions that build between the blacks and literally anything that's not black. And you watch that just wind up and wind up over two hours until eventually it explodes into an interesting final scene. Oh. Sounds like a film I'd, I'd be in- interested in watching. Good oh, pitch. that's good. Well Wouldn't it be great if just one week I pitched you a film and you're like, that I don't want to like watch it. Absolute horseshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't want to watch that. Mike, have you watched it? And you're like, no. <laughs> and like, fuck, I have to do this alone. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the end of that episode. Yeah. Five out of five. Just go watch it anyway. Bye. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? What a great film. Yeah. Yeah. What a really, really great film. Yeah, really good. One, what an intense film. Mm. It's really like I was exhausted. Like, like at the end of this week, and I'm like, okay, let's watch the film for this week. And we put on Do the Right Thing. It's just people shouting for two fucking hours. It's like it's just it's zoom shots and it's shouting and it's like and it's just profanity and it's but we're also with great music. Mm. So. I don't know. What do you think of this movie? Uh, well, I'll go into kind of the story of... i, I got to tell the story of how I watched this film. Okay. How did you watch this film? Let's, let's call this segment, how did Brenton watch this film? So, I was going into this film and I wasn't, you know... It wasn't the film itself. Like, you'd pitched it pretty well beforehand and, you know, I was I really wanted to see some of Spike Lee's work. I was, I was excited mm. to see that. But I wasn't in the mood, necessarily, no. to sit down and watch a movie. But I had to watch it because, you know, on my, on my Google Apps calendar... <gasps> 
It Classic was, movie banter episode 11 was was right now. Oh, no. So I had to watch I, it. I had to. I had to. <laughs> uh, no matter how I was feeling. Oh, oh God. Life is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that hard just doing oh, a do, podcast? You have to oh. what, do a podcast and you have to watch, watch a, a movie, movie before it. Oh. No. Um, <laughs> throw, throw a garbage bin in the window, Brett. Yeah. Why don't you? <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, I go into this. I'm not really in the mood to watch a film. So it's, see, it's two hours. It's like, that's not too long, but it's not. it's not... It's not short. It's not either, short. So it's like, oh, fuck. fuck, I'm keeping an hour and a half film. So, like, oh. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I sit down and I start watching this thing. Mm. And it starts, and it's kind of like this neighborhood, and the whole first hour and a half of this film, this three quarters of this film, is basically world building. It's like it really it's is. setting up this neighborhood and setting up all of these characters. It's such an ensemble piece. <laughs> if this was a video game, this would be the part where you just go and like like buy random things from yeah, like, yeah. you do this the is, random side quests. This like. is this is Skyrim <laughs> yeah. and it's where you don't do any quests or even any side quests, you just walk from town to town. Yeah, yeah and you just see people. Yeah, and you just yeah. like mine for materials. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so and then the last half an hour is like fuck. We got to do some main missions. Yeah, and the last half an hour, a dragon attacks you, and you got to do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Good exactly. analogy. God, that's great. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm watching this film, and it's not necessarily grabbing me, but mm. I but I like I liked every single character that was on screen. I, I liked them all, yeah. and I was like, and I was I was enjoying myself. and the actors as well. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I think I think great work. Um, and then once. Once this film kind of... Uh, once the the tension that's constantly rising, and not so much in your face, the tension in this film, mm. um, even though the characters are very in your face, the tension's still in the background, and you never know if anyone's really going to act on it. No spoilers yet, mm. but there's a moment where the tension rises, and thank God that it climaxes. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then I thought... Uh, it was just magnificent. You know? <laughs> like, I really yeah. did. I thought, like, wow, like... That was expertly handled and, and crafted and yeah and and done and and what a profound kind of ending I guess mm. um, I thought I, it could have ended maybe ten minutes sooner true yeah true. like because if the, the thing happens and it fades to black and then you yeah. have this like weird epilogue kind of thing for maybe like five six minutes you don't yeah. need it I think it's I think it's necessary but it could have even happened before the go to black you oh know? yeah 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 yeah, yeah um, absolutely uh, and yeah so. I, I, I'm surprisingly because I was lukewarm I was Joaquin Phoenix in Gladiator I had my thumb kind of <laughs> in the centre it wasn't going down or up and then I knew it was you Joaquin and then it went straight up that, yeah. yeah and I, I think this movie's great and I think it it is it, great I but think the message that it's it's trying to yeah I okay I gotta say this and I'm sorry I'm monologuing but I love it when... I want to talk too. <laughs> I love it when, like, works of... Because like, this is a work of art. Isn't movie. it, though? Yeah. Yeah, so much um, colour. Like. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. It's very vibrant as well, this yeah. film. Oh, it looks so it looks Especially because so when you think of ghettos traditionally portrayed in film, they're always, like, yeah. black and, like... not Grey, like, like, grey, like, yeah. yeah. Bricks, lots of bricks. Lots and of there's bricks. lots of bricks in this movie yeah, as well, but... but it's, it's just... The costume design is, like, off the charts. Off the charts and, and the colours and the vibrancy of... of of this production design it's just awesome yeah, yeah. Re- really really nice yeah um, but I love it when art and I'm not I'm because I'm going to say it's complicated because okay and I really mean that with this one this movie's complicated you're not just like saying it because it pisses me off like. I know I know I do, I, do. Yeah. I just saw your I just saw the, the frown you saw the of, vein like pop yeah, like in yeah, the head yeah, yeah. <laughs> like pick a side <laughs> um, no but I love it when pieces of art because this is art asks questions and they don't provide the answers they just leave good it point. out there in the open. Yeah, good point. This and, one does that a lot. And that's... I appreciate it so much because... I wrote that down, actually, because, like, my... One of my main criticisms of the film... I don't know if it even is a criticism, but I'll, my the thing I wrote at the very end of it is, what is this film's thesis? Mm. What is it trying to... Like, it, it kind of gets answered because... This is not really a spoiler, but, like, the, as the credits roll, there are two quotes. Mm. And, and the quotes kind of do summate... That the thesis, but for the throughout the whole film, you kind of say, "What is this film trying to say about?" Well, okay, this one's all about racism, so like deeply about racism. This is a racism film. That if you want to, oh, should I watch this? It's a film about racism. Um, it's about racism in, in the late eighties, early nineties. That is as applicable then as it was now. Mm. Um, and yeah, and I, I was trying to work out like Spike Lee, what are you trying to say about race? Because so much of the film is just blacks and whites and and all other colors just yelling at each other and with each other as well not just at the other race but with each other Mm. about all sorts of things that are outside their control and also inside their control and like and I'm I'm just kept watching going like like, yeah we get it Like, like yeah of course like there's None of it was novel. I thought any of the things Bucky was trying to say with with this movie, and I'm like, and then 
but then as I thought about it more, especially once the film ended, I'm like, oh, wait, no, there are some smart things the Spy Kids are doing here that other films about racism aren't. Number one, there is no substance in this film. And when I say substance, I mean alcohol and drugs. This is a film that it looks at like a very ghetto neighborhood, but it doesn't have anyone who's like a, a drug addict or an alcohol addict. You have a drunk mayor who's in it, but you never really see him drink or be drunk that much. Hey, wait, wait, a uh, mayor as in like the older gentleman? Yeah, That's... the one who's called literally mayor. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and I, thought... I was going to say, yeah, there is alcoholism in this film. And yeah. he, it's only with his character, but... But it's not that like, prevalent. Like No, no. I, I'd say it's more that... Because he's, he's one of the most coherent out yeah, of all the characters. That's right. And I feel, I feel, and this is the thing, I feel, because this is an ensemble piece, and as we, um, it, the characters are not, they're, they're almost stereotypical. They come across as stereotypical at, yeah. at the start. But what some I, of them get deeper. Some yes, of them, some not of them all get, of them. But, but what, I appreciate, has no arc. <laughs> what I appreciate is though, is that I, I know you've said that the characters are just yelling at each other a lot this film. Yeah. That's true. But, at the same time, it's almost like they're shit stirring each other, and they're they're enjoying themselves. Yeah, there's a there's a for the first half half of this film, characters are genuine. Generally, it's just how they communicate. Quite, quite quite happy and quite you know happy to get along with each other. Yeah, and oh yeah, like, like even though they're all shouting at each other, it doesn't yes, mean they don't like each right. other. Like, and yeah, and and so there's hints of this this um some racial undertones yeah but between characters and but there's little hints of it and and that's where the genius of it is is that as it builds you never for me like you never would have dreamed this film ends the way it does no but, oh, but I, kind, I kind of guessed how the ending would happen you understand why it happens and oh, how yeah. it could happen if I remember watching the film thinking if it doesn't end in this way I will be very surprised and then mm. it did end the way I thought it was going to yeah, end exactly. and like I'm like there ain't, there ain't no way this this is this is still going to you know be here by the end of the film exactly and like, yeah. yeah and yeah, and like, and I think a lot of that comes down to some amazing performances. Like, I didn't realize how star-studded this film was because mm. I, I normally avoid cast lists and that kind of stuff. I knew John Turturro was in this film. Yep. And um, but sadly, the only work I've seen him do before was the Transformers movies. <laughs> and and, I, and by the way, I think he's great in the Transformers movies. Oh, he's hilarious. He's funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's good comic relief. I'm like, yeah, bring him back. And he did like a quick cameo in the fifth one, and it was still shit. But like, <laughs> but he's great in this. And like, and so funny. Like. Oh, actually, yeah, I can't talk about this still spoilers, but like when he, like maybe two thirds through the film, when he has a big DNM with one of, this, one of these characters, oh my that, god, that question his identity about yep. what he's trying to be. I thought that's genius. That's really Wait, smart. Which, which scene is, is this? The when shot? they're sitting at they're sitting no 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 they're sitting at the bench in the in the restaurant. Yep, and um, is he, it by the window? No, not that one. That's a Ooh. great scene. That's, that's a, my that's my favorite scene in the movie. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what won his dad the Oscar, right? I don't. I don't. Know, he was not, the dad was nominated. Yeah. No, he won it. I don't think he won, dude. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, th- rip. I think he was nominated. Um, ah, well, he's, he's a great. nomination. He's, like, yeah. he's, he's, he's wonderful. And, yeah, I wouldn't call his performance, like, Oscar-worthy, but, like, it was still very, very it's good. It's probably the most... It's it's probably the most oscar Beatty performance in the film, if that probably. makes sense. Probably, like, yeah. For the role. I'm not so not yeah. so much his performance, because all the performances are quite... They look quite good. Yeah, they're not yeah. they're not really going for awards in that sense, but no. Adam, if you were... <laughs> Martin, Martin Lawrence should be getting a reward for his face that he pulls, like, <laughs> like, all throughout the film. He just... I know what Martin Lawrence is on, but he must have been on some very heavy drugs that film, because He's just like oh, oh. he pulls this like this like just zoned out face yeah, the like entire the film. Jawed, like, woo, woo, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's really great. I love that um Samuel L. Jackson's in this because of course he is. Yeah, and but and how wonderful because he doesn't really, isn't isn't that much, in it that much. He's like he's just the like, radio. He's a, he's in it a fair bit. He's he's in it over the point of like it's not a cameo, but it could be if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Which is classic Samuel L. Jackson. Exactly. Yeah, credited as Sam Jackson in this film. Yes, yeah. strange, eh? Hey? No L yet. Ooh. Yeah. But um, speaking of him in the radio, um, because he kind of he's kind of like the eagle's nest above all this, like mm. like talking as it's happening. Did you not think there's a huge parallel between that and American Graffiti? Oh yeah, I I was watching this like like oh fuck, this is this is American Graffiti. Mm. There's a lot of similarities between this and American Graffiti when you think about it. Actually, yeah, where yeah, you just you like where you go around this town, that kind of stuff, um, and you just and you watch these these uh, locals' lives and how you know and this and how intrinsic their idea of identity is married to this location mm, mm. yeah and what a location too I just love this neighbourhood and like yeah. I said I really liked all of these characters even though some of them have like serious flaws obviously mm. oh yeah even but those still characters I it. still love them like yeah. they, they also love how a- like um, the, the way this is shot like because there are so many pan shots where you just walk down the streets mm. um, th- you'll see main characters just in the background yes so like they're always just yes doesn't that give a I yeah fucking love it dude. isn't that great because yeah. you'll just be there'll be like two characters that, like in the foreground like having a convo but then you'll see like a main character you recognise just walking behind them it's, just like doing something else I love it and I love I love how what 
we always say this with these old movies. Yeah. If there's one thing that movies today I wish they would do is that if they just bring the shot back, if they just bring the composition a little further back, yeah. let us into the world a bit more. Build that world. Like, the, the last film I can really think of that did that, and it's not the best film, I'd say, or even this director's best film was Hateful Eight, is mm. um, in terms of, like, you show the scene and there's there's a world that's still happening. It's not just... What this Tarantino film are you thinking? Hateful Eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, so we can see, as in, like, you see that whole cabin for basically the whole Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah, let us into that world. It's great to see someone's face from, like, the nose and the yeah. eyes. And, and that's great. There's and that's a lot important. of extreme close-ups in this movie. But like, a hey, lot of extreme close-ups. Hey, let's, let's, let's take the camera back, please. And yeah. um, Silence is the other one by Scorsese. Yeah, that, that one, the camera was pretty far back. But also it went far in as well. So there was yeah. that juxtaposition. But yeah, I really appreciate that. And the mm. more and more we talk about these movies, like Bridge Over River Kwai um, springs to mind. Uh, another one sprung to mind as well. Uh, oh, um... Hitchcock. Oh, oh Spellbound. God. Spellbound, yes. Yeah, yeah. Bring that camera back, dude. Let us see, yeah, it's see really, these characters. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing we've learned so far doing this. So like, yeah. yeah, and it's just, it feels so good. And because there's also how um, the music is like so married to this neighborhood. Like, oh, I love yeah. I love the scene. It's not a spoiler where like you have the boombox war. Yeah. Where, like both characters have boombox. It's just like a big dick contest. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to turn up louder and louder. And you can just, and you can, who's that character's name? The one with the boombox? Like, Oh, uh, starts with an R. Or whatever it is. Like he's like he. I'll look it up. You can, yeah. yeah. You just you just because a scene will happen. You'll just see him just walking about with his little boombox and like. Oh, I just I just love the music in this film. I Same. thought it just what a great soundtrack, especially the opening scene as well. The little eighties <laughs> music video, basically at the start. Yeah. yeah. I thought this whole film actually felt like felt, a music video. Yeah, it felt yeah. it feels a lot like a music video. Yeah. Which. I know it's like the directorial st- yeah. style. Uh, there's a lot of Dutch angles in this movie. Yes. yes. So many Dutch so angles. Much looking at Spike loves his Dutch angles. So much staring down that lens as well. Yeah. And you- How great was that scene? Okay, so there's an iconic scene in this. Are we yes. like a lot Halfway of- through this film. Yeah. yeah. An iconic scene that you must have recognized prior before going in. Where- no, I didn't. But oh, I do you not know about what- it? And then I looked it up So this is the and- one where the camera zooms and they're yeah. saying the, the, the swearing. I yeah. mean, they're, they're saying the insults. It's yeah. like, you monkey motherfucker. Do, 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 yeah. do, and then like cut to someone else different. Like... Oh, so that's a famous scene. That's that's really yeah, I famous. Can, I, as soon yeah. as you said famous scene, I was like, using, it's gotta be yeah, that I was one. like, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, and watching it for the first time in context, it was like, oh, what a great, great scene. Yeah, dude. Uh, just uh, sorry to have a little aside. Uh, that character that we were talking about with the boombox, mm. his name is Radio Rahim. Ah, okay, Radio yeah. Rahim. Got a little right there. They kept calling him Rahim, but he's Radio Rahim. Radio Rahim, coming to you live from classic yeah. movie banter. Played by Bill Nunn, who you may recognise from Sam Raimi's uh, Spider-Man trilogy. Who was he in that? You know, uh, oh, Jay oh, Jonah yeah, Jameson, yeah, yeah. how he has the kind That's of assistant right. guy. Yeah, he's not oh, the assistant. I knew I recognised like him. He plays um. Oh, I can't remember his character's name. I used to know his character's name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's always there's that scene where he's like, I heard Spider-Man was there. And <laughs> yeah, he gives that look yeah. to Peter and you're like... Peter's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> he's on to it. Yeah, yeah. He knows. Fuck. That's right. Let's get a Spider-Man 4, please. Oh, bring, bring Sam Raimi back. Peter Parker um, with um, fucking... What's his name? Tobey Maguire is Peter Parker. Uh, yes, please. I'm a fan of Tobey Maguire, Spidey. I like, am too. Yeah. Like, I love it. Maybe it's, it's nostalgic because like, we were kids and we watched it, but like... But, yeah, three's a... Pretty shit, but like, but, yeah. but man, those first two. Spider Man two, dude. Like, Spider Man oh two is like one of the good. best films made. So good, it's so good, so good. Yeah. Like, oh, I just I love everything about that movie. Like, like what a great performance from Alfred Molina as Doc mm-hmm. Ock. Yep. Like, I love. It's great because James Franco isn't in it that much. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, Kristen Dunst actually has something to do that film because yes. like she's no longer like in one and three she's very damsel, but in yep. two I mean she's still damsel number two as well because she's kid up at the end but, but there's like, that whole subplot that's happening with Jay James Jay Jameson's son yeah and being he's like the an astronaut, astronaut yeah, for yeah, some yeah. reason and that they're engaged in getting married and oh god the stakes are just so high in that they're movie so too. good and he quits it and there's a thematic of you know how heavy a superhero life oh, is and oh, it's so good that movie it's is so, so good. good yeah yeah and also like the, the train scene is like hands Incredible. down one of the best Incredible. scenes in a movie oh, like, my favorite scene in that movie and I, I remember it just it breaks you is is Aunt May's whole storyline in that film. Oh yeah, so, like how like you know she she loses the house and whatnot, oh. and the scene where he tells her oh. the truth that not that he's Spider Man, but that he he consequently caused Ben Parker's death. Yeah, and 
And it's so good. It's such a good decision. You would not get that from a superhero movie today. You would never get that. You wouldn't get the moment where... Because whoever it was, whether it was whoever wrote the screenplay, whether it was Sam Raimi on directing, whether it was the actor coming up with an idea, that he reaches for her hand and says, I've tried to tell you so many times over all these years. And she... It's not resolved in that scene. She no. retracts her hand, looks horrified, terrified at Peter, and walks upstairs. And it, that's, and that's the end it, of the yeah. scene. And we later get resolution with it. Mm. It's like a few weeks, I think, later when... when which I is cried, one of, yeah. yeah with I, my other favorite scene, which yeah. is the real favourite scene. That's the lead up to it. But it's the one when... The, the, the garage, helping, yeah, yeah, the garage, the kids yeah. Helping her move. I cried in that scene oh, when I was a I child. Cried in that scene, like, like, I she's like, too as a kid. I know, the yeah. 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 I was because she's like, everybody needs your hero, and, and it's like, you know, someone who was strong stands up. She's got yeah. that great southern like a twang oh. to me, and like Rosemary Harris, just she just Knocks she's so out good. Of the park. And you can see Peter standing there. She's like, you know, heroes are good, and like she, it just gives. He, that, and then the next scene, he you're like, needs him. Yeah, yeah, like he needs him. That line, it's yeah. just. And, oh, and, Peter, and Peter's you. like, and Peter's really pissed off because she threw out his comics. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> and I God. love it. But I also cried as well in that scene where um she's trying to give Peter the twenty dollars. Yes, for, yeah. And I'm like, I remember when she does it, and and he and he and he, and he says, <laughs> and he says I can't. And then she's crying because she's like, like this is all I have, Peter. Just take the fucking money. And he's just like, I can't because he knows how much it means to her. As a kid, I'm like. Oh, I remember like seeing my dad just spend 20 bucks at Coles and I'm like, no, dad, <laughs> this can uh, hard, help Aunt May. <laughs> yes, you will. And it's, and she just, and that's the first time I think she's really like broken. Like, I don't think she breaks that much in the first film. No. And just like loses it. No. She loses well, she it. She does go to hospital because of the Green Goblin yeah, at one yeah. point. <laughs> that's pretty breaking. she loses it at, at Peter. Yeah. Like, and just says, take the goddamn money. Oh, it's so yeah. good. But in three, she's like, she's so chill. She has nothing to do in three. Like, There's that great scene at the start when she gives him the, the ring. ring. Yeah. That's the only scene that's like... You're like, we have like, we have like Tony Award winner Rosemary Harris. Let's yeah. use her for something. Yeah, <laughs> she's exactly. Like, yeah. But... She's great. Out of her, so, um, Field and, um, uh, who's a new one? Um, Marissa Tomei. Oh, easily Rosemary She's Harris the is there. So. Yeah, yeah. I love that Aunt Mates keep on getting younger and younger as well. Like, yes. eventually, Aunt <laughs> May will just be, like, Peter's, like, cousin. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Eventually, like, they're the same age. Oh, my God. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, be surprised in the, uh, in the fourth iteration of, of Spider-Man. Uh, so. That's bigger. So, um, so, fun story. Sony, like, it was this close to happening. Oh, so, like, no. No, no, no. Not just, like, not just, like, back after three was made. So, after, um, Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man too flunked um, before they rebooted it and went back to Marvel Studios t- with Tom Holland th- when the Sony emails got leaked you sure you saw this? Yes. Like yeah they literally contacted Sam Raimi and said hey it's been like five or so it's been half a decade we've made our piece do you want to make another trilogy with us we bring back Toby we do this again and like do adult Spidey like oh, which we get in the, the you original do. trilogy but yeah. like fucking 40 year old Spider-Man oh. Peter Parker I, and I've, I've seen the Amazing Spider-Man Four concept art. Have you seen that? Yes. Yeah. Where it's like there's the opening montage where he brings in all the Beatles films and um that dude is cameras in all the movies. Um, oh, the, Doc. Uh, that uh, guy. Yeah. The lizard. He, no, yeah, not the lizard. Um, the um, guy who's like the snooty waiter in number three. Oh and, like, yeah, the no. Usher. Um, oh god, what's his name? Bruce uh, Campbell. Ash- yeah, Brad yeah. Ash versus Evil Dead. Bruce Campbell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy he shit. was meant to be Mysterio. Are you kidding me? He was Are meant. You- fucking kidding me in number four it was gonna be revealed <laughs> that he was Mysterio so those three what? people were the same character ah f- oh, that makes me so fucking angry like <laughs> and like just that would have been the best thing ever <laughs> I want Spider-Man 4 so bad if there's one uh, thing I want I guess I'm Raimi Spider-Man 4 yes, right? yeah. with Tobey Maguire bring back Bruce Campbell bring back the whole original game bring back Kristen Dunn should do it oh. or just also bring back J. Jumbo Janison who's also one of the best parts yes. about the, that yes. trilogy easily Ex- oh my god yes I know notice oh also, my god notice how the new movie movies so bad. I know same we'll never get it we would know no but also notice how the, the new movies they haven't um, they haven't made a new J. Jonah Jameson no because they can't recast it. I think it. he like, has like an email in the Amazing he does. Spider-Man trilogy. He the, does. The, the, those two Amazing Spider-Man films that yeah. tanked. But, uh, yeah. And, you know, and the reason he hasn't been in it is because J.K. Simmons did such an incredible job he did with that character like no one uh, else can play it now no I, one else no can one do else it. and yeah. he's iconic it's iconic that give, give me pictures of Spider-Man like like everyone who knows Spider-Man knows like Spider-Man for I that I can't get over J- Bruce Campbell was going to be Mysterio because I thought <laughs> I honestly thought in the fourth film it was going to be Lizard because you know Kirk Connors had been set up for, through all those three yeah, films yeah, you yeah. Know, with his one arm which I love I love that like he's just in the world he's I'm just like, there like yeah, yeah yeah you know he's coming and but you, like, yeah. you're like oh you're going to be a villain at some point and there's a great <laughs> actor like you know that played him as well yeah. <sighs> Spider-Man 3, why did you... Why? Why? 
Oh, you know, you you know why. You must have done the research for it. You know why I, I got know, fucked up. I know, but yeah. I know, I know. But just why? Because it would have happened. You're just lamenting that it did happen. It's just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm lamenting the child... fact that it didn't make enough money that it could happen. You know yeah. what I mean? That it... Oh, no, it made the most out of all three. Did it? Yeah, it made well, it 800 million. I know it got... Because Sam s- Raimi wrote the script for Five Man 4 and he's like, this is horseshit, I'm not going to make it. Mm. And then Sony's like, this script is horseshit. Okay, well, and, yeah. props to Sam Raimi then because I do respect that. Yeah, yeah if- and he's like, three didn't work out the way I wanted. Like, so... I'm, I'm not going to deliver a shit script into a shit movie again. I don't, I don't want this to get worse. And he's like, just reboot it. Three just ends on the worst note. It does, because you never know, because it ends with Peter going back to MJ in the cafe, yeah, and you never gets. know what happens after that. Like, you presume they got back, and they're just like, I don't know, they're, so, they're Dude, happy somewhere. They've been through some shit, though. They have been through some Which shit. Which I like. It's, yeah. it's a jumping off point to an, a sequel. We, won't see we it, will though. never get it. Yeah. We will never get it. But you know what we have got instead? Do the right thing. <laughs> uh, Sam Raimi, do the right thing and make Spider-Man 4. Do the right anyway. thing. Anyway. <laughs> back, uh, back to do the right back, thing. Back to do the right thing. But no, I, it is... I, th- I don't know. Maybe we should just rate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's. Just, uh, we can't... We can't we got, we're, go, we're, we're not going back. We've got to go to the next Yeah, yeah. So, it's well, only break. Yeah. Do the right thing. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Joaquin Phoenix style. For our listeners out there, talk us through it, though. So, here's, <laughs> ah, here's the funny thing. So classic. So so our usual meetup. You're on a Thursday night, and you, you know you're flicking through Netflix, and do the right thing pops up, and you're there with with your partner or with the fam. Maybe not your family. You're just there. Maybe you're alone, mm. and you're like, "Do I watch? Do the right thing?" I don't know. I'm almost. I'm almost tempted to say it's complicated, but I won't. You piece of shit. I think what I'll say instead is that. Yeah. Look, this is a very aggressive, intense film. It's 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 like it's like you wanting to casually watch like Raging Bull or like um what's a very intense film? Like uh I don't know. Raging Bull's a great example. Or any like Scorsese. It's like it's like this it's like a whole thing. It's like I think you should watch it because um it 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 does give you insight into into the black community that I don't think other films would do. There are some great, great films like Moonlight or um mm. or uh, uh, Straight Outta Compton that have you know do that recently, kind of, yeah, 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 like recently that kind of stuff. So I, I think this definitely adds to that kind of. You can see this film definitely influencing those films hugely. Yes. Um. Yes. Yeah. yeah for sure. Absolutely. I don't know. I'm gonna I could say a very soft yes. I feel like the average Joe who just like watches like average films that kind of stuff I feel like they wouldn't enjoy this yeah I, I, I'm i kind of with you I'm finding it hard to recommend it like uh, yeah it's, we find it excellent but like are other people going to find it excellent I, I agree with you I think look yeah I, I'd give it a soft yes in that mm. in that sense as well because whilst I I think I, I, I think this is you know a piece of art I think it's pretty magnificent um, it's a very angry film. You got to be ready for that. You like. have to, but it's undercut. I will say it, that is undercut by the sense that there's a lovely flow of humor that goes throughout this film. Oh yeah, as well, it's very funny. That like, underpins that that kind of that boiling aggression that the, the band is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's very racist. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is great. In, in that, it's not great. You know, racism. Isn't racism great. isn't it great? But, but, but I like that it's that there's Oops. that humor's there to kind of. Uh, to underpin that 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 grenade that the pin's about to come out and it's going to blow up at any point yeah. on this hot is it is it summer it'd be like well yeah because because it's record temperatures like it's yeah saying, well so. we hope it's summer yeah yeah um so yeah I I'm gonna say a soft yes as well uh, just know that if you're watching this on a Thursday night that you know it, the themes of this film what it's what's going on and that for me the first half an hour I was like where's this going mm. I love world building I love yeah. that. But I, was, but yeah, I didn't know what the main storyline was until a very late yeah. in the film. Which yeah. is fine. I think that's great. Yeah. I think it works in this film's favour, but you just have it's to like know life, going Brenton. in. It's like life, In life, you don't know what the main storyline exactly. is until far too Am late. Am I the protagonist or the <gasps> antagonist? <gasps> right now, you're feeling like the antagonist, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What's, what's a villain's quote that I can, I can give as Brenton? Oh, why so serious? <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, is there another one? Um, I've been expecting you. Mr. Nathan. <laughs> I've been expecting you, Mr. Nathan. Yeah, I know. You're at my home. Like, you you came here. Oh, no. <laughs> He's turned into a cat. <laughs> you know what we should do soon? Our cats episode. That's something we should do soon. Oh, my God. You you have no idea what you are getting yourself into. You're like, we should do it soon. Yeah, we should do it soon. Boy. Boy, after we finish that film, you will wish... 
your eyes did not touch the screen. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> let's um, spoil this movie. Let's spoil it. There's not much I think we, we need to talk about in this section, but we need to talk about the climax. Oh, oh you want to start with the climax? Yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. Go for That's it. That's what... Again, we're building through this hot summer's day. Like, we're talking about the heat. The heat's constantly... Like, the mentioned. literal newspapers, you keep seeing the it's, temperature. Everyone's like, it's hot, hot, it's, hot. I love that scene where they open the fire hydrant. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's bringing that aggression's coming out. It's bringing all this stuff to the surface with the sweat and everything. Did like, you see it coming? Oh. Like, the restaurant being blown up? Not to that extent, no. No. I thought... Knew, I knew something was going to happen. Be a, uh, I, remember think, yeah, happen. I knew there'd be a fight, at least. Like, yeah. there would be a physical fight. I knew someone was going to cork it. Someone was going to die. Oh, you reckon it was going to be, like, a death? Like, yeah, for yeah. sure. And See, it was. Yeah. Okay, so I have a point to make here. This film is what West Side Story should have been. Yeah. In the sense that, like, you've got these racial tensions between two groups in this tiny neighbourhood. There's music, and it wham- and it winds on up, and it winds on up, and then eventually someone dies, which is yeah. kind of the building blocks of West Side Story as well. But this is how you do it. Mm. Not with, like, fucking, like, 80-year-olds like playing, like, 12-year-old boys. And, like, yeah. you know... And I love that, like, that, that death is not the result necessarily. Because this is, again, it raises these questions, it doesn't answer it. Mm. What was the cause of that... Was that of that um, young man's death? I think well, everyone has the blame for that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the point that it's getting across that everyone really does have to blame. But realistically, all these characters and they do can blame a specific person, a specific group, a specific whatever. Mm. Um, but no one actually deals with it really. No, and like, and like every character is racist. Like every yes. character. There's yes. no one who. Like I love. I love when um, what is it? Um, John Turturro's father says to him like, oh, like give the man some brother talk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says it to like the guy, like the the young man who works at the store and that kind yes, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of like in the middle ground because he works for the store, but then he's also like, um, friends with with Spike Lee. Oh yeah, how great was actual Spike Lee as an oh, actor wonderful. in this film? Like wonderful. he was great. Yeah, he did a really really good job. And but like all this over having like a, just a, like a photograph of a black man up on a wall it's like it's like it's not even your restaurant it's yeah. like I don't know why Spike Lee was kicking down doors in the first place it's like it's not the only restaurant in your suburb sure everyone loves it it's the most popular one but you were the only one asking for like having Martin Luther King or something on that wall and the the way the way the, the oh, that vitriol with like the fact that it's it's all American Italian Mm. Right, that are on that wall, mm. and it's an American Italian restaurant. Yeah, it's like, and they look, can't get know like, the room. Read he, the room, he, buddy. He, yeah, he can't get his head around that. But at the same time, like you can kind of understand where he's coming from, he, his point. But he's just not willing to even have that conversation. You know, no. like really, he just wants to. It's like finding that that reason to let, and it's that heat building up during the day. It's that tension building up. It's the the cyclist that goes past and ruins his shoe mm. it's it's the little thing <laughs> yeah that's right that it's, like, is... it's like this is a free country it's like yeah. you you better be happy I'm a nice I'm a last <laughs> black man it's like <laughs> yeah god yeah. Um, I love how like, like um, all, uh, one of my other notes for this was like uh, this this feels like a play this yeah. really, really feels like a play. And so in the fact that like the background characters are very active as yes. well. Like every time there's like a conversation, like everyone who's, who's around like always surrounds the main character and it's always like five people yelling at one. Yeah. They're, like they're always, there's such a group mentality to it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like in West Side Story, you didn't get that. We had like one random chick like trying to like fit in. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was, but this one, this film did it really, really smartly. And I love that. Like how they're always like shouting at each other and they're always trying to break it up and that kind of stuff. Um, I yeah. also love that like, how uh, that character? Oh, what was his name? The the guy with the shoe. The, yeah, the, the shoes. The and, Jordans. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and the and the guy who has the issue with the uh, the photos on the wall. Yeah, yeah. He, I like I like that he tries to do this boycott, right? And so yeah. he goes around to the community. <gasps> yeah, and the community says no. No, we like this restaurant. Yeah, like that restaurant's great. I've eaten there for years. I they, I grew up in that restaurant. Yeah, and then how that turns as soon as that owner. One smashes that beatbox, but yeah. two calls calls that um, that man the the n word. Yeah, and that's when that's when that completely turns. And the whole like, community he, like, turns like, out. Beatbox, to, beatbox dude was a dick. Like you shouldn't have come in with the beatbox. No, no, blood. I agree. Like, but yeah. I'm saying that the way that 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 change just happens in mm. the community, like, it's and suddenly very quick. they are all against it, and yeah. they will burn that place to the ground. And you know, and they nearly, do, <laughs> and nearly brutally murder like that. The oh, is it Sal? The, yeah, the owner? Sal. Yeah. yeah. Awful. Um, yeah. Over- and he's, and he, I love it, the scene where you just like where he's just sitting there watching his, his life's work just burn to the ground. Yes. And you just see it affect him. And like he's not, he's not even weeping or anything like that. He's just just shocked. Yeah. He's just. And it's that's all linked with the theme that's constantly like there's that the thing of the the workforce basically like mm. there's all these people and they're all 
this in this community and they're all you know playing with the fire hydrants letting the water out and it's almost like the police and like the fire the firemen and and Sal and like these people and other people in the film too that like have businesses have jobs um what's the main character's name um Oh, uh, I can't remember. Lee's film. It starts with an M. It's like Murray or something. Or no, nah, you, you're looking at the wrong person for names, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna look it up right now because I can't stand up. It's alright. Mookie, 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 Mookie. 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 Uh, okay. it, 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 so like, there's this whole underpinning of like, get a job, do this, and and then for them to destroy that restaurant, mm. which this man has like built over, I think he says 20 years or something. He's been in that community. Yeah, something that like that. Yeah, like and longer than some of those young men. Because I don't even know how old they are. Yeah, like they're, if they're supposed to be teenagers or young adults. I think or they're like, young adults, yeah. I yeah. think they're around our age. And yeah. if we were to turn around and, and be like, I built that over 20 years. Like, what have, what have you done? You know, mm. like, what what can you say you've done and what have you built in your life? And yeah, and it's very built around that job. Like, when, yeah. you go, when you eventually meet his girlfriend, that kind of stuff, she's yeah. like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm earning money. It's that's like, what right. are you doing? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, that's like a random and, side blind and I didn't then, buy. And then, yeah. And then, yeah. The, and then he underpins that by saying, can you give me my pay? Like it's yeah. great. It's it's so. And he good. Like, chucks the notes at him, and he's yeah. like, "Fuck you!" And he's like, "No, fuck you!" It's like great screenplay. Yeah. Oh, and I think that also was nominated. Yeah, yeah. it was nominated as yeah. well. Yeah, and yeah, what an amazingly written film. I just thought, Fantastic. God, yeah. that was so smart. And like that scene I was mentioning before in non-spoilers when John Turturro was like, when we've worked out that he's just trying to be black. Yeah. I'm like, God, that's genius. Yes. Like, yeah. And you could and you, ha- you could see how confronted John Turturro was when he said that because how how he's like, dude, your hair's more more Afro than mine. Like, yeah. Like this is the way he talks as well. Yeah. Because like, you because yeah, you can see he 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 he's in this black community. He's probably always been in this black community, but he's not black, so he probably feels the most othered out of all of them. That's if anything. right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Great character. I thought just yeah. I thought that was really really intelligent. I love that scene. Now we can talk about it in the restaurant between the father and son, and when he oh, suggests yeah. the father. Oh, like we should sell this place and move back to the Italian, the, the you know, uh, to our. Yeah, suburb, he's like think bring he's back like, segregation. But essentially, what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the way that the father just says no and says, "I'm proud. I'm proud of the work I've done here. I'm proud I've fed fed these." these yeah, these and you see what it means and, to it. Know, like he's fed these people. And, like, then, yeah. and then that whole thing is undercut um, by what happens next when Smiley. A great friend Smiley comes yeah. to the window and, you know, and, and Sal, like, tries to, like, interact with him and the son mm. just tells him to, you know, fuck off, basically, and go yeah. away. And how that starts something on the street then. And the yeah. camera just stays in that shot. It stays yeah. in that moment looking at that window. So we go from the... And in that one shot, it's such a good shot because we're inside the restaurant, but then the scene goes out into the street. We continue with the shot, comes back inside, and the scene continues, and then the scene ends. All in that one shot. There's yeah. so much action there's happening. A, that's, but that's just all across the entire film. Yeah. Like, like, there's a lot of, like, camera passing between characters. Mm. I think that's, like, so, Spike Lee's, like, main style. When I saw Inside Man by Spike Lee, I didn't really notice much of that. So maybe it's his earlier work, but, like... Well, maybe, I've only seen two of his films, so I can't really say much. <laughs> but, like... But, um... No, I thought that was just genius how it kept on, like, passing back between people. You know, yeah. you'd have, um, like, those conversations where they're all insulting each other like yeah. when they go into the um, uh, a, when the guy sweeps at the start for like one dollar and then he goes into the Korean mm. store and he's talking to them and he's like insulting them like he's racist as hell like it's just, the camera keeps passing back and forth also love how at the end when like the building turns down and then they turn towards the Korean restaurant oh. and that man is terrified yeah. like his wife's there holding their child the baby yeah oh, and you can see, and he's like sweeping the broom at like like 50 of, of, and, of these people oh. like the, the community and like and with, they're all with, got their pitchforks and that kind of stuff and he can tell if, if he just says one wrong word his whole life comes crashing down it's wonderful He's, yeah yeah that's such a great scene and then and the way he kind of and they're all like oh they're all right like and that's yeah. the way it kind of ends he's but like he puts, i'm black too i'm black too he like, keeps saying yeah but he, what he's trying to say is we're all human like we're all yeah. the same like it doesn't matter like we're all we're all you know people and we should just you know put this behind you like what why is this and he puts out his hand for like yeah the and that physical action like yeah and they yeah. don't they don't reciprocate it no but, but they acknowledge it yeah, and they see right. and, and they like, can see yeah, you make that right. that universal move oh, it's, it's, it's yeah it's, it's such a, a physical great... film there's so much I must say like there's not I don't think there's that much dialogue in it to be honest with you like there's I think there's a lot of words because of the songs that keep playing throughout the, the, the movie but I think this would work excellent as a silent film mm. I think this would be fantastic because there's so much physicality to yeah. it like just the anger like the expressions in the actor's face they're so, like just the physical, the physicality to it. Like, mm. like you, you, you act, Mr. Brenton. Like, like as an actor, like you, you must look at this and and think, like, what a performance from I everyone. One, I think it's wonderful, and it's one of those things that I think performances like this that are captured on you know on film such as this that are not necessarily they're not polite. They're no. not. 
Well, again, the camera's not in right in your face. It's it's far back, and so it's physical. Yeah. There um, is a lot of extreme close-ups, though, in this yeah, movie. True, yeah, true, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what impresses me is that these people are, are real characters, and they express themselves no matter what. They mm. they they speak openly. They with their and by speak, I mean they vocally and like uh, expressing through their bodies and whatnot. And so, like again, like it's not really the Oscar Beatty performances of what I was saying before. No one's really quiet in this film. They 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 stand their ground and they say who they are. And I and I love that because I think like films today, like we don't really get performances like that that are. Some would say larger than life, mm. but people act like that. You know what I mean? They do. Yeah, like so. I appreciate that so much, and um, I, I kind of wish we had more movies like this today. Same. Yeah. It's, it's a it is a really intelligent film, and it's so funny because like we, you know blockbusters are still happening and that kind of stuff. Mm. I'm really keen to see the new Mission Impossible. I really want to see that. Oh, same. Yeah. Same. We should go see it. Yeah. I mean, we got I've a lot never, of, yeah. I've never seen a Mission Impossible film, but oh, I know yeah. the last couple everyone's like raved about. And, like, oh yeah. Really enjoyed. yeah. Maybe we should do the Mission Impossible. Oh, I think it's too because it came out. Yeah, it came out last week. So that's like, all right. We can still start going through it. We yeah. can watch this new one and yeah, we'll start going through. Because I think oh, the first one's definitely older than twenty years, but I think the second one would just cut in it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the second one I think came out like in two thousand, so we definitely couldn't do that. I'd love to see the first one. Yeah, yeah. I, you're fine. It's yeah. fine. You'll we'll do an episode on it, so yeah. you'll see <laughs> you'll see more of it. Okay, but, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, there's there's also um a lot of random things in this movie, like just like random things that I feel like Spike Lee could have cut out, like that subplot with the really nice sister. Like you know, he, he, like, and she's and she is very lovely, and she's talking a lot of sense. She's like, "What are you all doing? We should all just be kind and all that kind of stuff." And then she goes in the restaurant, and Saul's weirdly creeping on her. And then the boss <laughs> like, "Could you not?" <laughs> like I don't know. I just I didn't feel like that needed yeah. to be in the movie. I know there's, what you mean. Yeah. There's also a scene where like um he goes home to his girlfriend, and he just starts like showering her in ice <laughs> for some weird reason. <laughs> like it's so hot, and he's just like there's like a five minute scene where he's just like just putting ice cubes. He's like. Thank you, God, for like the knees. Thank you, God, for the nipples. Like, do you remember that scene? Yeah, no, like, I do. I kind of the more I thought because I agree, I was on the same page as you, but the more I the thought real, about the film it, really slows down. Yeah, when that happens, like but really slows down. There's that great shot of like the lips and like the light. Oh yeah, that's yeah, a great yeah. scene too. Um, yeah, cinematography is, yeah, is outstanding point, yeah. on, in um, this film. Yeah, but I think I think it's that thing of like that the the boiling tensions, the the literal heat like rising from the body and like how that's linked to aggression and, and, and why this day after like 20 years this restaurant's going to be burnt down it's like that the, the, because they're talking about the sweat and stuff so I feel like it's a thematic thing but mm. again as a, as a viewer as an audience member you're like well, what's going on outside let's get back to the neighbourhood but I think I in I need to watch this film again I do want to watch this film again same yeah, which, is, really, which is my oh, biggest yeah. compliment to it you know like, I, so, I feel like we get better with it as well exactly like, so I really want to rewatch it I feel like it. that scene is like linked to the themes and stuff of, of what's happening in the movie and I think it's mm. a good job and I've only literally come to that kind of realisation in the last you know half an hour or whatever because mm. before I was like yeah I could have done without this Exactly, um, like, yeah. yeah. I, I, I know, I feel like the film should have ended on what I thought was one of the most perfect shots, where inside the burning building is the... Smiley. Yeah, yeah. and he finally puts the photo on the wall. Oh, yeah. I, thought, I thought that's where the film should have ended, just cut to black, you, you've, you've said what you needed to. I, 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 was, I, thought, I literally thought then and there the film was going to end, because yeah. it does fade to black, and I'm like, what a great way like, of, of showing the price to pay to get, to get your photo on the wall, you know mm, what I mean? It's like, yeah. I, know, I, thought, I found that really powerful, and... But yeah, um, now in in West Side Story we mentioned the cameo of Captain Marvel as a comic. Right. So I feel like in this film we have to mention um, the line Black Pete, Black Panther eats pizza. <laughs> Do you remember when like he's oh, going? Did they say that? I can't. They, he's holding it. a Black Panther comic. Wow, Do you know that's cool. That? I didn't, I didn't so it's that montage yeah. where he goes around trying to recruit people to yeah. boycott the thing, and um, it's like it's the group with Martin Lawrence. I think Martin Lawrence is the one holding the the Black Panther comic from the seventies, and. Um, like no man, we like pizza. It's like we're gonna eat pizza, and then Martin Lawrence like holds up the thing, and he's like, "Black Panther eats pizza," because <laughs> he had like the old like right. style yeah, of no, it. No, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm, oh. like, I'm like, hey, and it makes me think what on earth our world would look like if Spike Lee directed a Black Panther film. Hey, we might see it. It's true. I mean, we Ryan, Ryan Coogler did an amazing job. You've seen Black Panther, right? No, I haven't. Oh, no, you haven't. No. That's right. Yeah, because we were going to see it together and then a thing came up or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, Black Panther is very good. Um, 
for a host of reasons, and, and one of it's because it's very well directed. Ryan Coogler mm-hmm. did a really good job of it. It feels like like it has an artistic statement. I could I could go for a Spike Lee directed Black Panther. Oh, same. And yeah. that makes me think this might it might even be better. Mm. Just and Ryan Coogler is an amazing director with um Fruitful Station and Creed. Or well, won't know about Creed, but <laughs> if it's any like Rocky One and Two, then maybe it's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Very very far down the line. Yeah, but um. Yeah, but and Ryan Krieger did a great job with it. But Spike Lee, could you imagine him making oh. a Black Panther film? Like, just it's like it's like the Avengers rock up, and then Black Panther rocks up with his like posse, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "Yo, man, it's, it's, like, it's like what you what you doing?" Like, like, no, he's in New York, and like all the, it's like the first Avengers, like the aliens rock up in New York, and then Black Panther's just on the streets. He's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and he's like, "There's like the boombox," and he's just like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> yeah, no, I could I could go for that. I could go for a Spike Lee directed Black Panther sequel, maybe Black Panther yeah. three if we get there. You you know? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, a spikely joint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that he says it. Not a spikely film, a spikely joint. Yeah, like oh, he's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Because oh yeah, because also the reason we're doing this episode this week is because um Spike Lee's got a new film out. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm wish, I should have mentioned this at the start. I'm very excited to see <laughs> yeah, it. Black yeah, Black Clans, man. Yeah. yeah, it looks genuinely great. It's yeah. got Adam Driver. Right? Adam Driver. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, what's his name? Speaking of Spider Man Three, uh, uh, Topher Grace. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and. There's a heap of people There's in There's heaps movie. of people in yeah, it, yeah. yeah. But, um... Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to see it. I, I this is my first film I've seen of Spike Lee's. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm super... I really want to view more of his work, actually, because... Same, I same. Like what else great. has he done? Let's give it a cheeky Google. Cheeky Google? Yeah, cheeky, cheeky Google. What else has Spike Lee directed? Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> let's, let's have a ponder. He's a Spike Lee genius. Bear with us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Listeners? He's getting up the internet. Okay, I got his filmography. You ready? Wonderful. Okay, Go for it. so he did... Oh, Malcolm Mac. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah! Of course he of would do a Malcolm X film. Of course he did film. a Malcolm X film. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, how amazing were those final two quotes? Oh, wonderful! The, like wonderful. Yeah, that's I'm when the film made was, sense. I'm glad that not necessarily, but like I, I'm glad that there was both quotes there. I think because I thought yeah. it was just going to be Martin Luther because it's a great quote but yeah. then you see the Malcolm X argument and you can see because um, there's no easy argument I mean there, I mean, obviously, there's no answer no I it, mean yes, Martin yeah. Luther is right obviously he's more right than Malcolm in my opinion but um, but you can understand why Malcolm says violence gets the results like yeah it doesn't, I love, it, it doesn't provide the answer but it asks the question that wants you as an audience member to have that discussion afterwards about mm. Like yeah. I love like this film was basically a whole like Martin Luther King versus Malcolm X debate. Like I love yeah. how the film opens with um Smiley just like drawing the crown on Martin Luther and he's like explaining it. Yes, yeah. 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 Um But yeah, probably. I don't know much of his other films to be honest with you. Like I haven't heard of many of them. We shall have to check it out. Yeah. Um, like, there's Inside Man, which is a great heist film. Um Yeah. Oh yeah, hey. I heard she rocks. Okay, I I I, I hear the Spike Lee's like a mixed bag. Like he's either really great or not. But um, yeah, I'd be definitely keen to see Malcolm X. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was like a biopic. Who was in that one? That uh, Denzel Washington. Oh, there you he, go. Yeah, yeah. He must have gotten the Oscar for it. No, he didn't. It was very controversial. Whoa. Yeah. There um, you go. But hey, man, Nelson Mandela is in Malcolm X. Like the real Nelson Mandela. Really? Yeah, he's in Malcolm X. We need to watch this movie. What should I do to the list? There you go. Um, that's cool. So Nathan. I think uh, now we've done some spoiler talk. Yeah. I think we need to look at this film's poster. Hey, let's look at this film's poster. Okay. <laughs> okay. So do the right thing. Um, hey. There you go. Oh, by the way, how great was that shot where um, it's like those three blokes sitting against the red wall? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, I love that shot. Oh, great. Oh, great, great, great. Um, this poster, I like it. Yeah. This makes it, I don't know why, but this feels like a poster for like um like cheaper by the dozen or something like like a kids film. I don't know why. If it, or like or um Daddy Day Camp. I don't know why I'm vibing that for some weird reason. Yeah, I like it though. I think it's cool. I think it's really cool that it shows kind of like like again like look at that like that that those colors and mm. whatnot. And I love the childhood like portrayal of the exactly. gun of the police shooting yeah. and that kind of stuff. The police actually aren't in it as that much as you think they'd be, like. No, no, which is good. I think that's yeah. Good I think that's yeah. good too. Yeah, it's not really about like police antagonism. When, when, like, yeah. when they're in it, they 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 are in it. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like the first time the police rock up is in that fire hydrant but, scene. Yeah, and they're great very, scene as well. Yeah, and they're Even very. The guy just gets soaked with water. But they're also very accommodating. They do the job. Like they mm. go, oh well, you know, if you want to put a file a complaint or you know of the suspect, well, who's mm. the suspect? They do murder that one character, but you know. No, I'm saying the first the first time they come in and they kind of they fix it up and they say, hey, don't do this. Mm. This guy's making complaints. They say, hey, you're very welcome to make the complaint. 
um, just you know point out the suspect, and it's like he can't do it. And it's yeah, like, yeah, it's just yeah. Like, he's black, and it's like, well, well, buddy, look around you. That's, it's like- <laughs> that's all right. Um, and then they go away, and the second time they come in, it's all it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also like in this, and I kind of this is a thematic thing in the film, but mm-hmm. I love that Spike Lee's character Mookie is in the Italian garb, if that makes sense. The whole film. And he has, like, the Italian pizza box as well. That's You know that's not Spike Lee, right? Spike Lee is the one with... No, that is Spike Lee, dude. Is that Spike Lee? That's Spike well, Lee. Well, I've been wrong the whole time. Mo- he's Mookie. He's ah! the lead character. I was so Spike confusing... Spike Lee as Mookie. Oh, my God. That makes yeah. so much more sense. Who did you okay. think he was? I thought he was um the one trying to r- rally the troops. No. Ah. No, no, no. He's, that's Spike Lee. There you go. So, when we're having the conversation... Oh, he's really great in this film. I was like, yeah, and we'll talk about completely <laughs> d- two different performances. They're both great. They're both yeah, great, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I I really like that. I kind of like that he's... And then it makes... It's it's such a, you know, climax then when he's the one that starts the... Yeah. The yeah, when he like, grabs the bit and yeah, he lifts yeah. it up and throws it, you're just I was like... just like, oh, oh, no, dude, don't. It's like, don't. buddy, you just... You just yeah. yeah, but it just escalates crazily. Yeah. I this is an okay good, poster. Pretty like, good poster. I don't know. I would have loved to see more of the characters. I don't know. Like, I don't know why the blue was so predominant. Like, mm. what does that text say? It's the hottest day of the summer. You can do nothing. You can do something. Or you can... Do the right thing. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, yeah. Do the right thing. So, that brings oh, yeah. us to title talk. I was about to say, because the title's dropped. Um, oh, just before we do, just quickly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like a better poster would have been, like, just, like, the strip, one of the, like, streets. Do you see the houses? Maybe have, like, all the characters outside their windows, like, yelling. Maybe. I feel like... You know it would be great if they incorporated I'm, I'm Mad as Hell into this film? Like, <laughs> I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I could do I could do, do the, the voice. voice. Please do the voice. I'm mad as hell <laughs> and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm a fire in my room. <laughs> oh, fuck me. That makes me laugh. Uh, um, but, um... Yeah, yeah, like, I don't know. I feel like this is serviceable, but I get you mean. Maybe something else. Yeah. Yeah. So, title talk. Title Do talk. Do the right thing. It's dropped in the film. I'm not... Yeah, I mean, the title's dropped a couple times in the yeah. film. But I, I think it's the best title, to be honest with you. Mm, what do I, you do the right it's thing? It's grown on like, me. Yeah, it's, it's grown on me. Yeah, but Do like, the right thing. It's like, well, what is the right thing? I, I think, think, I think yeah. that's the question it raises. And it doesn't answer it. So, I think, yes... I don't know. Be a nice person. Like, like Jane, the girlfriend, like, she says the right things leaves. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like, just be together. It's like, you know, just... We try and move past racism and all that kind of stuff. I love, I love how when it comes up, it's it's the old the male, yeah, and he's like, "Hey, Mookie, what? Do the right thing, all right?" Yeah, <laughs> and that's like, the whole combo. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, it's like Spike Lee's like writing the script. It's like, "Oh shit, I, need, I forgot to put the title," and he just <laughs> he just chucks that in. But it's it's true. It's like everything else gets in the way of like just that that simple, you know, live yeah. by your morals and you know. Yeah, because it's such a simple statement in that sense, but mm. it doesn't. As as this community tells us, it's a lot harder for people to put aside their prejudices and you know um, their vendettas, I guess, against whether it's a race, whether it's a personal issue, whatever it is. You know, yeah, yeah. let's that get in the way of because people they just become what they what you know. Everyone, all the characters are doing by the end of this film is insanity. Like they it's, are insane. It's like yeah, chaos. Yeah. You know what? I really wish in this film that this was setting the continuity of the Spider-Man universe. Mm-hmm. And like we had, you know, when Spider-Man Two, when Peter Parker works at the pizza store. Yeah. Like he, Peter Parker gets fired, and he happens to sign up for souls, <laughs> <laughs> and pizzas just delivering his pizzas. I just got to quote Spider-Man Two. Yeah. You know the pizza guy, how he's like, you know, take this to this place and do this and this there, and then yeah. Peter kind of stands there for a second, and he responds with the greatest line. Ever. Ghoul! Do you remember that? How <laughs> I he do. Says it? Ghoul! <laughs> and he says exactly like that as well. Oh, uh, fucking hilarious. Okay, my favourite line in Spider Man 2 is um, when Pizza's swinging about and he jumps out of the alleyway as Spider Man, and that random guy's just like, hey, he, he stole, stole that, that guy's, guy's pizza! pizza. <laughs> so good. Oh, fuck, it's a great film. But I wish that Peter Parker would just like sweep in his Spider Man <laughs> he just breaks up the fight. Like, and oh. then he no, that's the building that he goes into where the fire's happening, and oh. then the green goblins in there as well, like posing as like, <laughs> that's help right. Me, help me. <laughs> and they have that epic fight, and then in the meantime, everyone's just at the front, like, what the? <laughs> then with the boom box, it's like, what? what? <laughs> that's the crossover we've been waiting for. Yes. Yeah. Crossovers nobody asked for. <laughs> But they're the ones we needed. They yeah. are. I think also a great title for this maybe could have been East Side Story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, West Side Story. What could have been? Uh, anyway, um, 
I just want to know. Yeah? What? Critics. What about them, Brenton? What are they saying? What are they saying? These bloody critics. <laughs> oh, I hate critics. Oh, I'll tell you, should all be gone. Oh, I'll tell you this. Yeah, let's go. All what right. Are they well, on Rotten Tomatoes, do the right thing. It's got a, no- a score of ninety three percent, Brenton. Hey. And audio score. We just we just constantly choosing great movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like apart from West Side and um, Emerald, like we've just having a great yeah. 11 films it's like it's yeah good. We've, we've had a good streak so yeah you know obviously highly rated I think the critics were right about that um, okay so the first um, positive review from our critic comes from Sean Burns from the magazine The Artery with A-R-T in caps good on you Sean <laughs> um, he said the richest and most thorough cinematic exploration of the American ailment I fear may eventually be the end of us I don't know yeah. if it's. Uh, I don't. Know if, I don't. Th- I don't think this film is cynical. No. I don't think it's saying like this will be what it is. Yeah. No. Like I know racism. Stepping outside the film, I think racism comes in waves. Sometimes, like in in the world, like sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's really bad. I think overall we've gotten better, but like definitely it gets more intense um, as the years go on mm. for certain amounts of time. Yeah, I don't know if it's and I uh, in terms of the film, he says the richest and most thorough cinematic explanation of an American ailment. I don't know if I... It's also not American, by the way. Yeah, racism, no, no, like, no, it's, no. Um, If we're going to talk about American racism and a film that really encapsulates that, like, mm. God, watch 12 Years a Slave and oh, get God, through yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. So, I don't know. I don't know if this is the richest, but it's, it's a, a great c- perspective. Mm. And there's lots of questions in this that are raised that I appreciate that, you know... Um, he's done. What we're basically saying is that Sean's wrong. No, he's not <laughs> wrong. It's great... If, if for him that film this film did this for him yeah great I think it's going to be the end of us I think probably but I don't I don't think we're there yet what yeah. is going to be the end of us Brenton oh, if, if this be, isn't it it's going to be a meteorite it's going to be Armageddon probably yeah. oh, I think it might even be like biological disease well, you know, oh just, yeah that yeah, could be that's or, a popular one over, everyone says AI by, caused by overpopulation or something yeah, yeah something like that could just be a disease like yeah. remember when remember Ebola was a thing like, like they couldn't find a cure for a while and I was like fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, that could have been it yeah it could have been it yep so no I don't think it's going to be people throwing the garbage bins through windows but <laughs> Peter Rayner from the Christian Science Monitor. Look at Peter. Doesn't he look like a happy chap right there? Look at, look at, look at, look at that face right there. It's a there. sly grin. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks, he, looks, he looks very sinister in that photo. Yes. Uh, uh, that's good enough. Cool. Um, okay, so he said, Its characters are often abrasive. Its language is consistently foul. And yet it takes a complicated view of race-related violence. Yet it's an attractive and even beguiling ooh, ooh. film in many ways too, with large resources of humour and intelligence. Yeah, Peter's sure. on the money, I think. On the money. Yeah. No, good stuff. Good on you, Peter. Yeah. I must say, I'm, I'm waiting for more critics to be wrong, because yeah. so far, all the critics we've come to are right. Okay, here's a bad review. So, Ralph Novak from People Magazine. Oh, People wrote a ma- review yeah. for this. There you go. He said, if Lee is saying that racism is profoundly painful, frustrating, and confusing, no one will argue. But this film states the case without offering any insight. Ralph's got a good point in my opinion because remember I said before I was watching this film going what's the thesis yeah like yeah I remember for so much of it I just kept on thinking the message of this film is like racism is bad and I'm like yeah of course racism is bad and that's what this guy is saying too this Peter from People but like I don't know I think it has more to say about yeah. the execution of racism I think mm. that's where this film comes in and how um, its solution is has to come through dialogue. It can't come through violence. This is an mm. anti-violence film. So I think it does have a thesis statement. I'm answering my own question now. But yeah. yeah. Basically what I'm saying is, Ralph, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Kevin Carr, he's from 7M Pictures. A Kev Dog, he wrote, Sure, this movie opens up the racial problems of everyday life in New York, but it also has a very forgiving tone to what one could label as the oppressed. What? What are you trying to say there, Kevin? You're trying to say... It should, he's saying it should be it's more forgiving. of a blanket, Maybe it should be more of a blanketed statement of racism is bad. Racism is bad. But it already is, in my opinion. Yeah, like, yeah I agree. Well, like, one, one could label as the oppressed. That's the thing. I think everyone's oppressed in this film. There's I no, think, there's I no think oppressor. It, is it because he's saying it forgives maybe Sal and what goes on there? But yeah. everyone, like we were saying, everyone has got major flaws in this film when it yeah. comes to prejudice. No one's like easy off in this film. Yeah. Maybe maybe Samuel L. Jackson. I think he's living a good life in this yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's just playing. He's kind of the overseer in this. Yeah, yeah, Next yeah. Next review. Okay, so the audiences. This is what they're saying. So Robbie V gave it five stars. He said a tour divorce. Two di- two divorce. Tour divorce. It's yep. a tour divorce, but it's also a tour divorce that gets better on the second and third viewing. Yeah, I feel like 
if I watch this again, it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be mm. better every time I watch it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Liam B, he gave it five stars. He said, it's that good. It takes an original perspective on race intentions, creating an amazing watch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 100%. Liam good on, on you, the Liam. Good, thanks, you, Liam. You're doing good things. Okay. Um, Hunter R gave it half a star, saying, holy hell, was this annoying. Thanks for your insight, Hunter R. Hunter, you're just so insightful there. <laughs> holy hell, this was annoying. Dot ellipsis. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess racism is annoying, isn't it, Brenton? Yeah, exactly. like, it's not that old thing. It's just so annoying, isn't it? And lastly, Jack H. He gave it two stars, saying, The concluding sentiment is agreeable and especially pertinent with today's crass race politics, but it is delivered by way of a loud pantomime with a collection of obnoxious, dull characters that generate little pathos. Jack, I can't, I can't Jack's got a lot of big words in that review just yeah, then. Yeah, he does. If from yeah. the last review to this one, there's a, there's a <laughs> yeah, from, change. From yeah. annoying as hell to like... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know about that, Jack. Um, I get where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, especially with today's race politics. Like, I feel like today's race politics is a lot of shouting as opposed to like intelligent yeah. insight. But... but um, no, I think... Obnoxious? This, I don't think so. Dull? I don't think so. No, I think... I think yeah, I think this film... Is worth the watch. Mm. Yeah, I disagree. I, don't, I agree with the statement that this film is not a character study. No. No. No, it's not. No, it's not. So, don't go on thinking that. No. Or hoping oh, for that. Oh, God, no. Yeah. No. But, um... But, yeah. Yeah. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Just do the right thing, everyone. Just Gosh. do it. Do it. <laughs> what a fun episode. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the one. chat, Nathan. Oh, you're welcome, Brenton. Yeah. Like, what I'm just gonna be like, like, why are you here? Like, <laughs> like, 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 no, thank you, Brenton. Get out. <laughs> like, just drop the mic. Just scramble out of the out of the place. No, it's been fun. I'm glad yeah. we watched this. Yeah. Same, actually. Yeah. I'm really excited to see more of Spice. Because I was really pushing that we see this film because yeah. you were kind of like up in the like, I don't know, but like. Oh well, I just didn't know much about it. Mm. But um, yeah, I'm really glad. Do we you feel watched better this. after watching this? Yeah, like, for sure. Same. I remember immediately after the film finished, I was like. Oh, this is this is a film. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel exhausted from it, but no, um, but um, yeah, no. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening today. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, um, appreciate it. Hope hope you guys all have a good week and whatnot. Um, keep on tweeting us, writing us some emails. Um, we should probably, we should read some of them out at some point because like we get some nice stuff in there. So, mm. um, when we get more organized, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gotta use that calendar app. <laughs> uh, have a good week, guys. Bye. Bye.